Blog Talk Radio. Hey guys, this is Those Guys with your host, Matt Marrero, along with your other host, Tristan Walter. And today we're talking about a very interesting movie. We're talking about the live action adaptation of Fist of the North Star. Oh my god. Are we not? <laughs> Are we not? I, oh, what? okay. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. I mean, what are like we talking? the other way around, but. Actually, yes, it is. Um, no, but this, this was so interesting, I think. Um, I've never seen a film, and by the way, if, if you guys don't know, even though it's the title of the video or podcast, it's a Mad Max 2, i.e. the Road Warrior review. So I've never seen a film franchise, and maybe maybe it's just me, uh, I'm, I'm sure they're out there, that even though it's technically the same type of film, the shift in how it was filmed and in, in the props and in, in a lot of the stuff was so different that it feels like it's two completely different uh, films. And it, I mean, obviously it's two different films, but like it feels completely different, even though, like I've never seen, let's say, like a horror movie sequel. Even though you try to change things, you try to move some things around, you, you don't want it to say, you know, the same movie just copy pasted with different character names. But even then, when looking at some horror movies, I've never seen one be so radically different. I think. Oh, yeah. Like in the same, within the same franchise. You can say that maybe they've gotten worse, let's say, right? Like, oh, this one was bad because of this, this one bad because of that. But, like, I've never seen – like, the only way to really, I think, compare – I should have a good comparison. I'm not saying it, it was a good movie, although I've never seen it. Comparing, like, the first or the second Friday the 13th films with Jason X. Do you know what that is, Jason X? Uh, uh No. I know who Jason is, but... Maybe. Okay, yeah, yeah, so basically, Friday, Friday the 13th, the first movie, actually, the first and the second movie are also good in this comparison, because uh, there was a different villain in the first one. It wasn't Jason, and Jason was in the second one going forward. So you could argue the first and second Friday the 13th, they're in this, you know, in this same, like, uh, bucket, I guess. But jumping from, like, Friday the 13th, uh, number two, or some of the other ones, to Jason X, all of the the other Friday the 13th ones, even the first one, take place on Camp Crystal Lake. That's where Jason drowned as a kid. And right. that's why all those supernatural shenanigans happen there. Uh, Jason X takes place in space. And Jason is just dicking around on a fucking space station, murdering everybody. That... Uh... I think uh-huh. that's the only way to really compare, like compare uh-huh. to, because because they're both still horror movies, but radically different. Do you see what I'm saying? In the same franchise. Okay. So in this case, this is supposed to be in this case it's supposed to be post-apocalyptic, but both movies are radically different. I mean, like if like I would say more still, of one got a hell of a lot bigger budget thrown at it. But even Other than then, that. <laughs> But even with the budget, I don't know how much it cost to film in the desert. I don't think the filming in the desert was the thing. Just all of the cars looking the way they... But even if the cars still looked the way they did in the first movie, it wasn't so much that the cars were so nice and shiny, because I think they knew their cars enough that in the first one, it didn't feel like they were like brand spanking new and everything was great. It's just more so that in this one, their costumes went up. Also, the explosion budget was rather high. Yes. There was explo- I mean, crap. stuff exploded. <laughs> yeah, stuff happened in the first one, but the, definitely yeah, right. their budget went up. And yeah. by the way, of course, their budget was a lot higher than the first one. Yes, you're 100% right there. But it's not like they were only working with like 50,000. Like, you know, it, they were still working with a fair amount uh, Australian dollars in the first one. So they did have right. A, de- a decent amount for the first one. When it comes to this movie, though, I mean different in the sense that even with the budget, because even with the budget, they could have still kept it the way they did the first one, in a sense. But with this, prog- but but the way it progressed, the way things are changing, the world is changing, and everything like that, it's just so interesting to see that in a sequel, where usually. I mean, I, I think of many different sequels out there, and many of them just kind of either if they don't copy-paste, they still don't stray too far, right? Where as long as – even though the Jason X thing really confused the shit out of you, Tristan, at least you're, we can acknowledge it's the future, and it's not the same shit every year at Camp Crystal Lake where it's like, why the fuck are we still opening this place up? 
Right. Well, because uh, with Mad Max, I guess for me, like, we got his story out of the way, basically. You know, you see the death of his family and his turn to just taking revenge or, or, I mean, yeah, he got revenge Well, he did in the first family, one. But also... Just just in general, yeah. just his lawlessness. I know, like, I'm him saying, kind of... Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying it's, they don't, it's kind of just his adventures out in the wasteland. And you don't, hmm, you don't need, like, it's it's just, yeah, it's almost episodic in a way. Like, just seeing him go across the continent, different, um, just different area to different area, and then, you know, like, he stumbles upon the refinery, or he stumbles upon the guy who knows about the refinery, and the people. Right, there. yeah. Yeah. So it's not like a I'm... huge it's not like a huge plot that forces you to stay in one place or to really um oh God, I'm not coming up with the right way no, to explain. I know what you're no no no. No, but I know exactly what you're trying to say. The plot does make it so that it can new life can be uh breathed into it. Like you can kind of expand your horizons. Sure they're still in in Australia. Which, by the way, right. I was – I think I said this when, I, when we reviewed the first one. Should, could you just imagine if it was just like they just never mentioned the apocalypse by name in the, in the film? Right. So, so literally oh, in the first movie, we're like – we were just like, yeah, it's just Australia. So in this one, imagine if they never mentioned it. Like, oh, man, a lot of BDSM gear in Australia. Oh, my God. Yeah, Max is just like another day in the outback. W- wait, what? What I think got me so confused, because, like, I feel like, and I know that, you know, this movie was made by Australians in Australia, so, like, you could say, well, that's their thing, no one should make fun of them for this, but how dare they talk about all of us, like, what do you mean, boomerangs? Motherfuckers. Guys. Literally, the kid was wielding a boomerang. Sure, it was super sharp, but he was wielding a boomerang like it was a fucking nuke. I mean, he cut a dude's. Yard. He cut a dude's. Ah, uh, but yeah. he cut a dude's fingers off, and he had. Yeah. And he well, had one boomerang into the into the dude's head. It's a kid, though. Yeah. I mean, granted, feral, feral, but it's still a kid. Yeah. I mean, I <laughs> no, feel like he found that or picked it off a corpse, because there are boomerangs sure. that you know they like. There are people that use boomerangs to hunt, and they are bladed. That's the origins of it. Like, it only be- okay. kind of became a souvenir and recreational in later years when they realized, oh, we could sell these. Well, no, but what yeah, I mean no. is, I, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get at, though, is when we say things about, like, oh, Australia and their boomerangs, I feel like people shit on us. Like, we're, like, like we're the ones who came up with it. Like, kind of like the whole, like, uh, oh. which this one I understand. This one I understand, the whole, like, that's not a knife. Like, we fucked that up. Right. Okay. Or like shrimp on the Barbie, we fuck that up. Right, like that's yeah. us being dicks. Yeah. But in this, ca- but I feel like the boomerang also goes along with it. Like, why do you associate us with boomerangs? I feel like that's a thing. Maybe if it's not, then I'm sorry. But I feel like it's been a thing for years. Like, it's just wrong that you're associating us with boomerangs. And it's like, exhibit oh, A. I, I mean, <laughs> Aboriginal tribes definitely use boomerangs. <laughs> All right, I'm just saying that, like, all, it does... But, yeah. No, it's, yeah, it, it's, it's like, like an iconic yeah. Australian thing that everyone always references, but it's like, yeah, you don't... You have to reference like, it every time you go to Australia, right? Yeah. Well, I know, but, you know, dur- I'm just saying that, you know, during the post-apocalypse, the creators from uh, of this movie from Australia, they, were, they live in Australia, or lived in Australia, yeah. they were like, you know what? The kid's going to have a boomerang. Right, or it's like, it's like for like going to New York. It's like, am I gonna get hit by the mob? It's like, oh, all right, okay, no, no, you're not. But guess what? But guess what? It, at the same time, though, when you have a situation where you have like the Godfather made by Italian creators, it's like, come on, guys. That's right. what I'm. That's kind of what I'm getting at here. Where it's just like yeah. it was made by Italian folk. So right, sure, right. but it was, but it's also like a, 
you know, say so it's not like so when I even though yes you're right like talking about the mob it's just like what fucking year are we in um but uh and to be fair this was made like 20 years ago but uh, more yeah. than 20 years ago at this point oh good god how old are we oh shit it's uh, no in my head it's always <laughs> 2000s and it's like no it's 2018 this was made a very long time ago um this is pre Mel Gibson Sure, Mel Gibson was alive and in the movie, but he was not the Mel Gibson <laughs> right. from 10 years ago that I remember. This was uh, pre-ass bag Mel Gibson. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but no, so what I was trying to get at, though, with the movie earlier on is that it's just such a departure from the first one. And again, yes, you know, we, we've talked about it even with the first one, and, and now we can do it again a little bit. Yes, you know, time has passed, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if, if we go by the exact amount of years from the second, from the first one and the second one, at least filming wise, two years had passed. So okay, right? Right. I just think that it is so interesting that it looks so different. And I know, yeah, budget, yada yada, but it's not like it's a huge sci-fi movie, right? Like, cause I mean, you know, when I say sci-fi, I'm talking about in terms of like spaceships and aliens and shit like that. So it's just so interesting how the movie looks different. Like it would be like if a super low budget Indiana Jones was made with the first one. And then in the second one, it had the Raiders of the Lost Ark plot. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. and a super, that's what I'm saying. Like super low budget indie, where he's just, God knows what the fuck he's doing, but it just looks, it's, it looks radically different than the second one where you end up having like a temple and shit like that. And you're like, Whoa, this right, is, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, so, like, imagine, oh like, God. Indy So Indy it would be one. going from, like, yeah, it would be like Indiana Jones on an actual archaeological site and then going in, going into, you know, the Indyverse and then it's a temple with the bowler and the golden figure and the sandbag. Yes. <laughs> it sounds funny, but 100%. Of course, shenanigans would happen, but, yeah, imagine Indy mostly in the desert with mild shenanigans as a first movie versus right. if the, you know, starting it off the second one, the way with not just, you know, it's funny cause they started off uh, this movie with a, uh, with, you know, the car chase and everything, but yeah, starting it off with the boulder and being like, Whoa, like Indiana, you know, it, that was like Indy's origin. Now Indy really is like running around being Indy. So it's just so interesting right. having something like that here guess- as well, where, yeah. yeah, I guess the first one has more of the feeling that things are going bad, bit of society left. Like, just, you know, in the small towns that they filmed, and it still looks like a town. Whereas now we've, I'm guessing enough time has passed where a lot of the resources in towns and stuff like that has completely run out, and society has completely degraded into just maniacs on motorcycles. Well, and it's super interesting because of the idea that, like, you know, you want to sit back, I think I do, and be like, but there's other resources, and it's like, yeah, but how do people get them without oil to right. bring, like, because the thing is, which is like, oh, but, you know, like, I can buy my corn at the local grocery store. It's like, yeah, but what happens when that grocery store stops having corn? Well, they'll get it right. shipped. It, nope, nope, they can't do that. Yeah. Right. Well, then, the, mm. So anything have to make a trek out to get. the farm. Oh God, the farm has been set on fire, and I'm being kidnapped. <laughs> exactly, and it's just like you would think people would come well, together in this moment, or at least kill to eat. Like, why are we just killing yeah. to kill? It's kind or of it's interesting like, that out of huh. both, isn't it? So the local farm has been taken over by the new instated local warlord. Well then, yeah. That's, well, <laughs> oh, oh no. Well then. Um, I, it would just, I, wouldn't it be, I don't know why my first thought is just like, you know, am I, is it wrong that I'm upset that, you know, this is mostly, uh, my neighborhood is mostly very Hispanic and it's not a Puerto Rican warlord. Is that why? Should I be, should I, oh should I be upset at that? Or oh my God. you're like, Mah! I'm like, well, I'm sorry. All right. First they were gentrifying my neighborhood. Now all of a sudden they're my warlord. Come on. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> but, oh. no, but no, but uh, but all jokes aside, though, it's just uh, it's just interesting to see how 
this is the max that we know, despite the fact that you and I have never, I mean, until you saw the fourth one, you and I had never seen Mad Max in our lives. Of course, the fourth one came out fairly recently, and so you went your mm-hmm. entire life without seeing Mad Max, uh, any yeah. of them, and so did I, yet somehow it's just kind of, I guess, through pop culture and everything, ingrained in our heads that, yeah, this is normal. This is Mad Max. Right, yeah. So strange. Because I could swear that I've never seen it before, never played any of the, I think there's only like one game on the NES before the PS4 game based on Fury Road. So it's like I've never seen any of them, anything like that. But I guess just somehow through pop culture, through people talking about it, maybe our parents talking to us about it and us forgetting. Because I don't know, like I'm actually wondering how I've I've never seen this before in my life, but it just felt so normal. Yeah, I definitely remember my parents mentioning it once or twice here and there. But but isn't um, it but is it, I don't know about you but like this movie well of course the movie itself you know it was all new to us it's just something about it felt familiar I guess yeah I mean I guess it's the it it's the I mean it's you know the crazy bondage suits and uh guys attacking a big rig on an open highway out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> like, what do your what Friday mean? nights look like Tristan. No. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, it's it's a normal yeah. Friday night. What are you talking about? You told you told me you played D and D. I didn't know it was this. Jesus, I mean, who's an orc in all of this? Oh, that. Oh God, Matt, you're giving me ideas. Well, <laughs> well, man sees movie thirty years too late. Makes D and D campaign about yeah, it. Yeah, basically, basically. Um, I'm sure people have done it before. I will certainly of not be the first. No, I mean, this this movie inspired so many different fan clubs and all that stuff. I mean, you know, a movie like mm-hmm. this, not only was it, of course, very popular, but just in general, just this this style, again, we, we know what it inspired. I mean, I can go on and on and on about it, what it inspired. I mean, we keep on making jokes about Fist of the North Star for Fist obvious Star, reasons. Right. Yeah. yeah, for obvious reasons, you know, Hokutona Ken. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, I think, in some ways, most definitely, um, just mm. just parts of this. I'm like, I feel like it inspires certain styles in JoJo, depending on yeah. you know what arc and stuff like that. Um, I think you know, I I think that I just looking at the movie. Uh, it's interesting how all they had to do was just film in the desert, and immediately it's just like, well, the entire world has gone to shit. It would just right. be like, yeah, I don't know, it, it really like filming... gives you that shift of wow, humanity yeah. is almost completely gone now. And it's just small bands of people trying to live out in a literal wasteland. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting seeing, um, especially because of how much the genre has taken a shift towards zombies. I think it's interesting to see a post-apocalyptic world without that enemy. I mean, yes, even yeah. in zombie, even in zombie media, people become the enemy too. Uh, but it's still, right. it's still nice to kind of take away, take that away, take that enemy away. And also, I think, um, even though even though Mad Max wasn't based off of a comic book, I think I mentioned this during our first review, it just feels like it would, it, it should be, right? Just mm-hmm. how over the right. top this film is with all, with everything it does, like how I know society would crumble, but the way, like if this actually happened in real life, but the way it crumbled is just so interesting. I mean, yes, of course, now 2018, there we would have certain technological advancements that wouldn't work, but we would still own them. But it's just so interesting how, like, again, like it goes from, and again, it's just you know the style, but it goes from, oh, you know, I'm Matt Marrero. Right now, I'm in a t-shirt and shorts. Oh, the oil's gone. Well, get me my BDSM gear. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just so interesting. Uh, yeah. How, that's why it's so, yeah, like, it's, it's so theatrical, bombastic, huge. Yeah, exactly. And because yeah. that is the last thing you want to be wearing out in a desert. Yeah, that's another thing, too, I want to mention. Like, of course you don't want to be in Mad Max's fucking leather jacket, but at the same no. time... You will die. You don't want to be in that. You don't want to be there. Yeah, you'll be you'll be fucking I mean, you know very hot. But it's funny. I I don't know what I'd rather if I had to choose. I'm not jacket. sure what I'd rather wear. Yeah, I think I'd rather die in the leather jacket. 
Well, it's not about what I die in. It's about what gets in cracks, I think, for me, really. Because no, I, I've oh, never seen... Yeah, no, that's what I mean. I think oh. I would rather have my body covered and just die of heat stroke in the leather jacket than... Mm. Yeah. Uh, case in point, yeah, I love uh, it. Lord, just... Lord, Lord Humongous. Like, uh... I, I get you're ripped, and I'm sure you, you enjoy the fact, but... Well. You, well, okay. Like I have the. Sunburn. I'd rather have. No, let me. Okay, no. I'd rather have. I'd have Max's pants, but no. If I needed to, I would show off that I am ripped. If I was that ripped, I would never wear a shirt. <laughs> I would never. What 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 need what need do I have to wear a shirt other than to protect other people from knowing that I can murder them with a look? That's fair. Oh, but, oh! Um, I hope we get to have one of those characters, in in a in three, just the character that it's like, huh? He's probably muscular. Takes off the jacket. Oh crap! <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, speaking of characters, speaking of very interesting characters, uh, mm-hmm. I thought that the the warrior woman, I thought she was very interesting, and I was kind of. I mean, I was only, like, she can die, but I'm upset that she died before, she showed that she was a badass by slitting one of their throats, but I think I expected yeah. much more from her. Not so much, I'm happy that she didn't become, like, just some odd, random love interest, because I'm happy the movie yeah, didn't go in that. Max. I mean, yes, I mean, in granted, that direction, I don't yeah. think... It, I don't think it would be a problem. I just think it would be too much if she was like, I'm in love with you. Like, it's funny. I never really, I mean, granted, they don't do it in movies often, but I think this would be a great movie for her to be like, oh, I'd sleep with you, but I don't do love. I'd be like, all right, that's fair. For a movie like this, yeah, I'd be like, that's enough, real. that'd be fitting for this universe. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But, um, so her, ge- but her getting shot and seemingly dying, I think that was upsetting to me, I think, because I kind of sat back and I was like, um... We could, granted, look, you need to have sacrifices in a movie like this, but we could yeah. have, we could have done more with her. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. Like the way that that fight on the rig went, I, like, I'm like, so. It was it was intense enough that I was like, oh shit, is Max gonna get out of this one? Um, not even thinking. It's like, duh, he's he's got two more movies that he's alive in. Of course, he makes it out of this one. Shit, no, the like third, the going third left one. Right. The third one is in between the first and the second one, and the fourth one oh. is in between the second and the third one. Duh, Tristan. What? Wait. Are yeah, right. No, I'm fucking with me. Um, or, oh, I have no fucking <laughs> idea. Um, I was like, wait no, a I, What? No, I assume the I'm third one sure is the after. The fourth be- one's way in the future. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's really hard to tell when the fourth one is because, I mean, they recast, uh, for obvious reasons, I mean, they recast fair. Mel yeah. Gibson. So I have no idea. I don't know I, I haven't mean, seen yes. it. But looking at, the, looking at the second one and the third one, this one is called Road Warrior for obvious reasons, and the third one is called Beyond Thunderdome. I assume that one is later. Yeah. And I mean, for the second one reasons. is obviously after the first one because it's after his family dies. And he has he has. Yeah. Re- they had, I mean, they do that recap, too. I don't know. By the way. I, yeah, they were just talking about it. I guess it wasn't him, like, in a dream sequence or anything. No, was the recap was... I think the recap is, is something that is great for a few different reasons. First of all, we also, you and I have to think, and I know, like, we're... We're not young and spry as much as we used to be, but I, I do think that because you and I grew up in the age of VHS and then, and then easily transitioned into the digital age with computers and all that, you and I are right. like, oh, yeah, what happened in the last one? Oh, let me look up that YouTube clip. Granted, we didn't get YouTube right. till like yeah. thir- We didn't get YouTube to like 13, but like still, true. I do yeah. I, well, 13, no, I think 14. Wait, what was YouTube? When was the first uh, YouTube video, the first YouTube video was like, oh, what, God. 05 or was it 07? Sounds I forget if right. YouTube is... Somewhere in there. Oh, I forgot, no, because I oh. forgot if YouTube... I don't know. I, either way, my no. point is, is that we were, older, we were... But... No, I'm only saying it because we were either 13 or 15. Either way, teenagers until we got YouTube. But yeah. the right. idea that we can go down to the local you know, Blockbuster at one point and see if we can right. rent or a local video store and rent Mad Max... 
I'm sure we wouldn't be allowed at the time, uh, our age, no. but still. Yeah, but no, still, definitely not. Yeah, but, <laughs> no, but your parents could, and if they wanted to show that to you, putting your eyes, you know, hands over your eyes over certain move, you know, parts of the movie, they could. Yeah. It's a lot different yeah. than... This is probably one first... of the ones that my parents would have waited. I'm like, eh, let's wait till you're a little older for that one. <laughs> oh, oh, I would too. No, no doubt. No yeah. doubt. Yeah. Um, but my, but my whole point is this, right? My whole point is, is that uh, when the movie came out, right? The first one came out in '79. This one came out in '81. I'm not saying VHS tapes didn't exist, but at the same time, uh, the first one came out a little. I mean, it had that English dub. Right, even though Australian is English, right. but it's uh, a oh different God. different accent. Yeah, so it has oh an English God. dub. Yeah, so, yeah. So my whole point is is that just like the second Evil Dead, even though the second Evil Dead did it for uh, rights dispute reasons, the second Evil hmm. Dead also had a recap of the first one in it. A, a fair amount of movies that are sequels might have, like back in the day, might have had recaps because it's you know you want to oh I missed the first one. Hmm. How are they going to see it in time? Right, yeah. You know, where nowadays it's kind of like you would, if Infinity War had a five-minute recap, I don't know if it does, by the way, I haven't seen it, but if it does, right. I feel like people would be like, get to the fucking movie. I already know all of this. I saw them all on my next Netflix queue last night. Yeah. I marathoned Although... every single one. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Fair, like someone something would, like Infinity uh, War might be nice to have like a little recap for because we let's be fair, we've had a lot of movies that well, time we have, but at this point we do. Well, no, we do, but you have every, you, but you still have uh, every. There is a way to, is what I'm saying. Whether it be yeah, legal yeah, or no, it's illegal. a lot more accessible. Right. It's yeah, a lot more accessible, it is accessible now for people to go back. Let me look at everything before I see this one to be able to see this one. Within the next week, right. within a full week, you could just watch, you know, or a, a full, heck, just be like, oh, it's a month until Infinity War. Let me watch a movie every day. Yeah, right. And you can do that easily versus right. I missed, you know, 30 years ago, you'd be like, I missed the first Iron Man. Iron Man 2 would have to do something to make you be like, yeah, this is this is what Tony Stark is. Right. And then shift into the the Congress thing from the first five minutes right. of the movie. They would have to do yeah. that because it's like, uh, not everyone may have seen the first one. Also, something else too that was interesting when they brought this movie over. Even though Mad Max, I think I thought Mad Max the first one did pretty well in the U.S., but it might not have. The point is that Warner Brothers didn't feel confident with the second one, so they actually stripped the Mad Max 2 title off of it and just named it The Road Warrior. But huh. because but because of that five-minute beginning, like that's you know the right. whole, and this is what happened to his family, it actually made people be able to catch up pretty much immediately. So even though even though they didn't know, oh, this was the second Mad Max movie, they really they got the entire fucking plot of the first one. Let's be real, right? Because we don't even have a reference to the fact that Max used to be a cop in this one. So to be yeah, to be honest, I think that that was not only perfect because. Hey, you know, it's it's hard, I think, to just kind of go back and see, like, oh, let's look at the first one. I mean, maybe some I, – I've heard that it was being uh, – by the time the second one was out, the first one was being played on television a bit. But, again, right. like, it – it depends on are you are you awake to watch it because I assume that it, I mean I know television has been different throughout the years but I I don't think they would air the first one yeah you know I'm pretty sure this the, would be a late yeah a late night movie or at least a yeah. night movie yeah exactly this um, is not going to be on prime time yeah or if it is going to be heavily edited uh, what I was trying to yeah. get at was it's it's not the Saturday morning cartoon block <laughs> right exactly which. That was that was more of an '80s thing because you know the movie came out just in '80 in 1980. But still, I don't think you'd be oh, there's a kid in it, so it's good for the kids. No. Yeah, no. No. I think, I think no, this is no, the one. No. I think I think this is the one time where it's like oh look, there's a kid insert that no kid will relate to because no kid's watching this. Yeah. Although I will admit, I do think that there are some kids that probably grew up on Mad Max. Uh, because, again, there was an NES game. Not that, you know, Net and Nintendo games or games in general can't be for adults, especially back right. then. But 
I, I do think, though, that there are some kids from the 80s that were like, what, I was 10 and I saw Mad Max. Yeah. So at least this one. I do think it was right. very popular for a reason. Like, There's a reason why we know about it. Um, a lot of uh, people yeah. that – yeah, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure our parents, if they watched it, I don't know if they watched it in their 20s or 30s. Right. But um, but anyway, but back to something I wanted to mention, or I mentioned the warrior mm-hmm. woman. It would have been nice, I think, to get some more from her. Um, mm-hmm. Were you shocked that the that the boy, the little tiny little one, he was the narrator? Were you shocked, Tristan? Um, I wasn't shocked, but like I thought that was interesting. Like I I didn't I didn't actually think of it until. You know, he reveals it's like, and I became the leader after the the uh, the helicopter pilot after he took over, and then I took over after him. I'm like, oh shit, that's cool. I'm glad you lived to old age, kids. <laughs> well, yeah, for me, it's it's more so like I think he's even though it's good that it's a young kid because sometimes I feel like uh, movies take kids that are you know not so like tiny. And they bring him around to do stuff like that, and then it's just kind of odd because it's like, all right, you're clearly like 15 years old. This is weird. Right, like yeah. they're trying to treat him like they're a kid, but they're not. Yeah. He, in this case, though, it's good that you know they got a kid who's like actually a kid or looks actually like that you know that small that you know that tiny. But at the same time, though, I'm kind of sitting back and I'm like, could he could he still be taught English that well? I know anyone can learn English, but, like, I'm looking at how yeah. young, like, I'm looking at, because is he only, like, how old is he? He can't just be five. No, no, I would say probably, I don't know, ten? Like eight, ten, somewhere oh, in there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. yeah. No, he's, he's super like, resourceful. Right. If they if they actually stuck around and, like, spoke to him enough, he'd still, he's still at a young enough age that he'd probably pick up you know, a language pretty easily. Okay. Because he, his Cause diction, is that it's not a diction, his, his pronunciation was really good as the narrator. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's kind of like, did you guess it was the kid? No, because he hissed a lot. Didn't even right. use one half word. Right. Like, like he's like if the narrator at least barked once, it'd be like, oh, that makes sense. He was the kid. Oh my god! Like, didn't even bark. I was uh, so. Oh, when that dog died, I was like, I knew it was coming the second I saw the dog, but it still hurt just as much. Yeah. No. Like that's what I was like. I started to think. I'm like, oh god, they even killed off his dog. This man just can't have anyone in his life. They just end up dying. I mean, well, it's two I guess things. that kind of makes it's, sense when you're living on the road in the apocalypse. But at the same time, dear God, yeah, let well, Max keep a friend, will you please? Well, two things. One, could you imagine a dog on the tanker? I mean, he well, he was curled up under the console when he was driving it over there. The yeah, so all right, that's fair. Thing. I mean, like, like just, what would the dog do? Like, because he'd have, like, would he jump out to try to... Like, that's the only... I can never oh, see yeah. him not dying. That's a sad yeah. thing because there's no I mean, like at, in the at I least at the end of the movie that maybe guy that tried to stab him from behind in the in the cabin in the truck. Yeah. Instead of the, the kid only trying issue, to beat him off him. Well, you know what it is. I think it's hard to. I mean, I, I assume they didn't fucking dangle a kid outside of a real car, but at the same time, I assume. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think the dog but, probably would have. Even a trained stunt dog is probably not going to be too keen about doing a scene on a vehicle. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Even yeah. if they had like a background in CG or a like, green screen and everything, right. still, I yeah. just. I granted, I don't think they actually. Like, I'm sh- pretty sure they cut at certain points, perhaps. I mean, the budget was so large. I imagine, yes, it was the late 70s, early 80s, but I imagine they didn't just dangle a kid and be like, let's hope for the fucking best, right? Yeah, like, I no, assume they no. cut in intricate ways. But, yeah, a dog being on the side of that, I don't think it would have worked. So no. even the way they killed him, they never showed the body. I'm sure also oh, because no, – no. what's Well, interestingly enough, I'm sure it's because of the Australians' rating board, a ratings board. But I also wonder if it was because they didn't want to have to create a prop. Like, sure, there was some stuff in the movie that didn't look too, quote-unquote, real. But I do think that yeah. it's – 
it's a bit hard to show dead animals, fake dead animals in movies because they're usually super yeah. fake. Right, exactly. You know? Oh, yeah. right. But you remember when um, the uh, dude in the helicopter tossed the snake down? Mm-hmm. If you look when he's holding it, you see the downward image, like he's in the cockpit and you see it downward looking onto the vehicle. If you look at the snake head in his hand that he's holding, it's a rubber snake, and you can tell because I had one just like it. First oh, that off, made me laugh so hard. It's the same exact snake. Second, I know same exact one. That too. Uh, well, I was gonna say no. I was gonna say it's just the same exact one. Second, I mean that's the problem with Blu-ray. Yeah. I mean, they like you when he first pulls it out of the bag, it's real. But then when he goes to throw it, yeah. obviously it's a fake. But no, like, but I'm just saying, like that's I the was, problem. I with was Blu-ray. so happy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was only a split second too. So I think the only real, the only reason I picked up on it was because I had one that looked just like it, and I looked at it for a split <laughs> second and knew. Well, no, I know. I'm looking at it more from the idea that even though yes, you're watching it on a smaller screen, you can still both pause it like it quickly yeah. and then go back right. and also just comparing it to like watching it in your living room on a tube TV doesn't matter what year it is on a tube TV it's it's a lot harder to to notice i mean uh, me i just noticed it, i think i noticed it the first time but like just taking note of it cuz if you guys don't know long time listeners uh or, or newer listeners rather if you don't know uh long time listeners do know i watch the movies again in the background while talking about them just so like anything pops up i'm like and this other thing uh when when the um, I can't remember his name, uh, but when the uh, Mohawked uh, rider, when his uh, I assume lover died due to boomerang to the head, which is again a common occurrence in Australia. Uh, oh my god! When he when he died, boomerang to the head. Yeah. Uh, it was it was a super mannequin for like point five seconds. Yeah. Yeah. But but again. Tube TV, would you have noticed? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe that part of the yeah. VHS tape would have been would have been worn out because you'd be like, "What the fuck was up there?" <laughs> or uh, one of the scenes where the car dives off and there's the guy standing on top of it, or he's standing out of it, and you see the car go through when they were attacking the uh, refinery. Um, mm. It's total. It's totally mannequin. <laughs> I mean, they're oh, driving I through think, a thing of cars. Of course, it has to be. Well, what was interesting was when the um, the dead body out of a car, and I was just like, like I know, like it's a dead body to match. Yeah. And he's like, oh shit, and me, I'm like, oh shit, that's a fake head. Yeah. But, it, I'm um, like, it was funny. I'm like, what the hell did they did they like melt it halfway to get it to look like that? <laughs> Yeah, no. I mean, um, that's a, to get it to get uh, it to look like a rotting body. Oh, it's they funny. probably I don't did. Know if... They just fuck. They they just fucking kept it in the actual desert for a day, and they were like, "We'll come back yeah. tomorrow." Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I think I think stuff like that, that kind of movie magic, uh, is stuff that I'm really like in love with. Because again, this was before you could do. It was it wasn't CG, folks. It was just practical right, effects. Yeah. They they practical legit effect. melted that in a fucking microwave for 20 seconds. Because, yeah, you have to be creative with that stuff. And, like, yeah, yeah, okay, there are limitations and there's stuff that you just can't really recreate spot on and that you kind of have to have, you know, a mannequin stand in and flash it for a few seconds so you don't stare at it long enough to be like, hey, that's not real. It's like, yes, we just murdered someone on screen. You want that to really look that real? (laughs) I do, rather you might want to it's, talk to someone. It's funny though. I'd rather mannequin because at least if you're watching it on a VHS, sure, bigger television might change things. Yes, but so I'd rather mannequin than CG because unless you're constantly, which can happen if you have the master files, unless you're constantly re-editing it for new um, editions of a film, it does like not, like not like you know some DVD. Specific. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean in a good way, not in a bad way. Oh, oh, um, oh. I'm referring to no. I'm referring to like the Star Trek effect, which I think, even though I don't like the way they change a ship, at least it's good, quote unquote. Versus actually adding things, 
where like it's right. where adding where like it would be different. Like in other words, the Star Trek, if you guys, some of you guys might not know, um, they've changed the way this ship's uh, practicalness versus the CG now over time on the DVD, Blu-ray, Netflix, stuff like that, versus something like that I think is negative, like Star Wars, where it's just adding new creatures. Because I think, I think, I don't know, maybe over time, even though I love the originals, I have no problem if they were going to CGI over to add depth, what they think is depth, to these monsters, rather than just making brand new ones. Right. Right. So in this case, like I'm I'm okay with, you know, again, mannequin stand in versus, you know, his lover dying and then it being, you know, either I mean, I'm like again, unless every single version from D V D to Blu ray to fucking, you know, ultraviolet to four K, I whatever the fuck, you know, to eighteen K, twenty twenty nine and a half K to all oh, of a sudden we're sitting here and every single time the boomerang looks more and more CG, because let's say, let's pretend the first time it was CG, unless you're going to constantly fucking edit those over and over and over to make them, quote-unquote, look better, while the rest of it still looks grainy as fuck because of when it came out, right? Right. All right, all right, sure, whatever. But I, but yeah. I personally, I'm a bigger fan of practical effects because I know it's not fu- you know future proof quote unquote. But I feel like when it comes to yeah. effects, nothing really is. Only right. only in my opinion, in my opinion though, what's future proof? to a certain degree, is what you film on, right? So if you're filming with really, really good cameras and really good reels and going, oh, the limitations mean that I have to downgrade this, that's Mm -hmm. a lot easier to kind of come back from. What I mean by that is Friends, oddly enough, filmed in 720p, downscaled for tube TVs because obviously it just didn't, like the tech wasn't there at the time. Right. But now that's why it's so easy to watch Friends in HD on Netflix or other television channels because it was filmed in HD. It was filmed with that in mind. Yes. The only problem, though, is watching Friends on on Netflix or on TV if it's in HD. And this is something they didn't account for, sadly. Uh, They didn't future-proof it in this way. They would have stand-ins for different characters from a side glance because they needed – because basically they obviously needed the actors to look at someone while talking, but they weren't going to fucking keep, you know, uh, all of the actors and actresses on set sitting in that one pose for, you know, ten different takes. Right. So they would replace them. However, on the DV- early DVDs, or rather VHS tapes, when they were released on VHS, all the whole fucking se- all the seasons on VHS, I feel like that one person who bought all of them is like, I may have made a terrible decision 20 years mm-hmm. later. Um so yeah, so when they released all of them on VHS tape, and then uh, you know having them on TV at the time, that was cut out. So you would just see maybe like the top of someone's head, like Monica or Phoebe or Ross or something like that. Now, when you look at it in full screen, it looks glorious and beautiful because that was the that's the way they filmed it. Like, oh, we're future proofing this, but at the same time, you could then see like that's not Jennifer Aniston, right? Because you could see the person's nose or something like that that was originally yeah. cut off when right. the when it was you know filmed, so it's but it's odd and that way they didn't. But in terms of quality, it looks great. So I think in that regard you can future proof it. But when it comes to like CGI and effects and stuff like that, uh, like I'd rather right. I'd rather mannequin. I'd rather mannequin. Um, yeah. Oh, could could you explain to me? You were – were you frustrated or were you just chuckling? I don't know what it was because you texted me saying like, oh, so, you know, they're going to – I guess they can blow up the oil refinery. Like, what, were your, what were your thoughts on that? Oh, just – well, how, yeah, were you like – Like that were they you said it, or were that you they like, rigged it to explode uh, the after that? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that part, the rigged, rigged it to explode and everything. Because I think, because were you thinking like, because I don't know if you were like upset, like, oh, they should have defended it, or you were just like, oh, like, that's a bunch of oil just gone down the drain, or rather. No, you know, no, toward... I was, I was um, looking at, I, I was more of the idea, I'm like, well, that must have costed something. Just like for oh. filming wise, it's like, well, there's an increase in budget right there. And I was yes. kind of looking, I'm like, I guess nobody cared back in the 80s about 
So we're going to build this whole set out in the desert, and then we're going to rig it with explosives for a movie. It's like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I love so much that you say this, as if I can't show you fucking like 30 or, th- God, only 30, so many clips of different superheroes, yeah. both U.S. and abroad, that exploded shit in the desert. I mean, yeah, no one gave fair. a fuck back then. Right, nowadays, right. nowadays it's I'm like, oh, thinking, they're going to be in the. I mean, yeah, well, because some of that land would be protected. I'm just thinking, like, even just wilderness-wise or even wildlife-wise, it's like that might have disrupted an ecosystem. <laughs> it is protected by Mad just Max. Saying. Oh God. Uh, you just see there's a tortoise, fuck. like, trying to cross the road, and it's like he's, you know, he's got, like, the nitro going, and he just skids, gets out of the car, picks up the tortoise, puts it on the other you, side, oh, nitro's what you, what you made me picture was, Thank I saw a cute Lord picture, I, I saw a cute, a cute, just, yeah, it's just a turtle narrating the whole movie, um, oh my god, what I was... What I was saying, though, was I saw a cute picture today of a tortoise with two little tiny uh, cannons on its back shooting water. Right, yeah. Like a blastoise. So I just blastoise, imagine yeah. the tort- the tortoise just shooting water trying to calm down the fire. Oh, my God. But, uh, no, yeah, you're like, it might have destroyed an ecosystem. You know, just all, just like, oh, well, I'm sorry that your giant spiders... Don't worry. Just get a fucking giant spider to cover the flame. I mean, not even this, like, ecosystem might be the wrong word for it, but at least in, in that area, it would have been a disturbance at the very least. No, no, I know what you're yeah, trying to say. Like, maybe, things, we not, like, maybe we not blow up giant things out in the middle of nowhere just because it's the middle of nowhere to us. Well, cause, Cause, yes, I mean, no, 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 you're, you're 100% right, though. The middle of nowhere yeah. to us. So, like, nowadays, right. Yeah. Is different. No, because now we yeah. know. Like, wait, organisms exist. They just might not be, yeah. like, fucking giant as shit. Especially, like, I, mean, I, think, I think what happens is when you're in Australia and you're Australian, when you see the, the giant fucking everything, everything is fucking giant there when it comes to the ecosystem, they're just like, well, we don't see anything, so does it exist? And it's just like, I'm sorry, just because the spider isn't as big as your house doesn't mean that there isn't an ecosystem in this desert. I mean, there are certainly small things like scorpions. It's actually funny. Usually the smaller a scorpion is, the more dangerous it is. I mean, I know it's, so it's they, technically the, the gland on their tail with their stinger. Like, mm-hmm. the bigger that, I think it's the bigger that is, the more potent they are. And if they have larger pincers, if they have larger pincers, then the venom isn't as toxic because they don't need it to hunt. They can use the I'm pincers to day. hold down prey. You, I'm, I'm, hey, no, I'm legit, you never know. I'm that's what I'm saying. No, I'm legit, like, thinking, like, all right, I got to write this shit down, because why like write it down? Because when the... King snakes. <laughs> yeah, well, why, red, well red then my thing is, why writing it... Red touch why, yellow. Yeah, my... Well, you're dead. <laughs> my thing is, why write it down? Because when the EMP blast hits, my fucking phone memos won't work. So, you know... Well, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was that? Snakes in the jello? Can you repeat that one for me? Oh, my God. I didn't hear that last part. Red touch yellow kill a fellow. Thank you. Uh, I know the one liquor before beer. <laughs> also or it was beer important. before liquor. Yeah, also important <laughs> in the post-apocalypse. Wait, beer um, or deer? No, <laughs> no it was either, either way. Beer I'm going to drink liquor. a beer while eating. Yeah, I'm going to drink uh, a beer while eating some deer. Um, uh, so... Question, mm. uh, are you, and this is actually, it sounds like a joke, but it's a legitimate question. Are you, okay. may, may, maybe it's a ratings board thing, but I'm being dead serious. Are you, like, interest? Uh, is it interesting to you that nobody decided at this point, it's been two films, things have really gone to shit. No one has talked about eating anyone else. Well, I know who I'm not getting trapped out in the wasteland with. Tristan, <laughs> Tristan, I would eat my own arm before eating you. 
I now go lay down on top of the fire pit. I anyway. Mm, okay. For warmth, Tristan. It's a cold like, night. It's a warm fire. I, Come on, Tristan. I honestly don't now put know the if smoke I want to in your ass. this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, well, I think it's rather clear. This is like, you're sitting there. You're like, all right, I think this well, is rather clear. Spoken my ass means he wants to eat me, or things are going to be very sexual very fast. And I'm not that kind I of. I mean, man. I'll go get my BDSM gear, I guess. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, um, I mean, it's the it's the apocalypse. Why aren't you already wearing it, Jesus, Tristan? Yeah, get with the right. times, man. I, I know. I'm sorry. I'm really behind. Um, yeah, right. I think in this, oh. it, it's odd because the people at the refinery still had chickens and pigs. So, like, you I'm know, assuming they're fine. not all, like, livestock or anything died during the apocalypse. Cause, well, yeah, because they, they don't need oil to run, I would hope. Um, right, yeah, pigs, you can still domesticate Pigs can run animals. without oil. It's just, yeah. yeah, and you can still plant, I mean, plant food, grow food to an extent, I mean the outback isn't exactly the easiest place to uh, cultivate plants, but... Well, no, but my thing um, was you have all of these, you know, gangs and everything, and they're just yeah. like, we're going to go around and we're going to murder for the fun of it. And it's just like, don't you guys get right. hungry? Well, yeah, that's why we're getting oil. But you don't drink oil, no, but it's for, it's for our, our motorcycles. To go where? Right. To murder? Okay, to but like other the, people gonna, for their food. But like what food? Doesn't seem like I've never. I, yeah. The only food that I've seen out of both it, films. Know. I've the only food that I've seen out of both films. I swear to God, I've only seen maybe there was some in the first movie and I can't remember. Only time I can think of food anywhere was Max opening up one can. I mean, the kid got an ice cream in the first one. That was really funny. Um, Thank you. Yes. But yes. But you're yeah, right. You're, you're right. right. Yeah, you're right. Max had the can of dog food. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Yeah. I guess uh, things have gotten really, uh, really tight there, huh, Max? Yeah. No. Yeah. Like they did. Like this. I'm not even. Where's the punchline, Matt? No. Look around you. No. <laughs> it did. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Max but no, just my, looks at the yeah. camera. It's like. You're going to judge me? You're going to judge me for eating dog food? This is a godsend. I would die without this. Just yeah, no, it people... in front of you. And I like it. <laughs> All right, Mel, calm down. You're 20 years too early for this. Yeah, oh, God. Um, but, it's like uh, no, but I... Walker looking into the future and seeing what he'll become. My God. Um, let's not even get into that right now. Uh, I just... I just feel like uh, nobody, people are like, oh, no, we're not going to take this. This is dog food. It's just like, all right, you fucking idiots. Yeah, yeah. You I take what you can. Yeah. But what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at here, though, is, is that... I wonder what? if, like, his dog could probably catch a rabbit. Although I suppose he'd probably let the dog eat it at that point, I guess. Yeah. Also, it seemed like the rabbits, they were, like, breeding them themselves. That was only in the compound. Like with the you know in the refinery, where we saw rabbits. Yeah. But anyway, well, I, that was but, but, but the, I'm trying to... that was the villainous dude. No, like he shot the rabbit with a crossbow. It's like, see, nothing oh. gets out alive. It's like you're a dick. I mean, oh, I right, get it. Actually, That's supposed yeah. to be the point. Yeah. Fuck you, yeah, I know. Man. <laughs> well, I think that part was needed. I was happy they did that in a sick way uh, because at least they like because it's one of those things where like it's hard to show. Especially, to, you know, depending on the film, how a villain is vil- a villainous, especially because you you know you know that they're not going to kill the main character, so it's kind of like, right. oh, who like who's going to get the brunt of this? So like just having yeah. it be like this, and also showing how, uh, like how a master of archery, I guess they are, or something like that, just showing that like, oh, mm-hmm. we're a really good shot without actually having guns. Because you right. know, yeah, Mel, like, uh, because Max had guns, yes, but you didn't really see a lot of people with guns at this point. Because really, it's interesting how you have Max with a gun because he's the, he's the guy who used to be a cop. So you have the right. cops with guns yeah. and everything like that. But like, you don't really see that many, you know, guns around. You mostly see crossbows yeah, the Raiders, and things like that. Cause, crossbows and yeah, bow and arrows. Yeah. Yeah, because it just seems easier to rig up than just being like, mm-hmm. let's make some bullets. Like what? 
So we definitely don't have a shortage of ways that the villains get to show that they're villainous in uh, Mad Max. No, definitely not. Uh, one nope. of the ways that I think I was not a fan of, I wasn't a fan yep. of it in the first one. I know. I'm yeah, you know not exactly. not a fan of it this time. Well, this time somehow it was, it was, it was strange because it was, it wasn't more sexual. I would argue because just removing a person's clothes doesn't make something sexual necessarily. Like it doesn't sexualize them. It just makes it more nude, right? So there was more nudity in this uh, very troubling scene. But at the same time, it yeah. wasn't. It was just so odd because the first one, it was definitely sexual assault. That was just mm-hmm. of both characters, in uh, yeah. man and woman. In this one, it was it was odd because it, I don't think it was trying to sexualize her, because no. again, like that isn't but sexual. She definitely right? got assaulted. But, but not, but not the not the way not the same way in the first film though, because what I'm trying to say is her clothing was removed, but she was, it was odd, because the first one had that yeah. skip. So you so then you just I guess like the idea. but in this one right. they they, they stripped wasn't... her which was of course was which is yes doing that in itself is it's assault still not of okay. course yeah right. no but I don't think they went to to what they did the first time is what I'm saying which I'm happy that they didn't have to imply mm-hmm. that or show that but I don't think yeah. well no because they they showed a similar stance of like oh they were you know picking her up in an odd very you know uh, strange way yeah. But in the first one, there was – it didn't really look like anything was happening in the first one either until they had the gap, and then you're like, oh, God, it actually did happen. They didn't just right. you know, do what they think is fucking with them. They actually hurt them in that way right. as well. But yeah. then I think the strangest thing was is when they – like I looked like I guess Max was trying to save her, and I wondered – you know, it, it kind of showed you like even though this movie has comic booky type tones, it isn't a yeah. comic book movie. This isn't a superhero film. Max isn't right. going to save the girl. In fact, the guy yeah. died as well. Yeah. So either way, yeah, yeah it, both, it definitely yeah. shows you Max is at best neutral. <laughs> well, no, he tried to save her. He just again, he's not a fucking superhero. I don't know if he did. Like, okay, so you think that he wasn't like he, he saw he that because she got he was running the down. Dude, the, well, the dude walks up with the crossbow, and yeah, I guess he did run before he saw it because the other guy still sees her. She gets yeah. He keeps um, yeah. The guy watched the other guy watched the, the captain or whatever you want to call him watched the whole time. Max was like, right. "Oh God, that's horrible. Oh shit, I have to do something." But of course, he's not a fucking superhero. He can't get there in time. He got um, there after right. it happened because what's Max gonna do? Again, this isn't an anime. You know, that's a big difference yeah, between, like, right. superhero stuff, anime stuff. You know, fucking Kenshido would have screamed from the mountaintops, and they would have been like, oh, wow, we've heard him. Let's stop immediately right. from crossbowing anyone. And then he would have just came yeah. down, and he would have just fucking, you know, immediately just did, you know, the fist of the mountain And just, expl- you know, it's like, you're already dead. <laughs> like, in this one, it's like, you can't fucking do that. It's just like, you know, like, what's Max right. going to be like? You're already Australian. What? Oh my God. See a boomerang. Jesus Christ. I mean, what do you what do you do? You know that's the yeah. and that's the difference I think between this and other uh, films like this. Like Max, in my opinion, is not neutral, but I don't think there's much he can do. Like he's gonna try, right? But like, what is yeah. actually going to fucking happen? Well, because I mean, I feel like it was. Because when he has the uh, with the people at the refinery, when they ask him, "Oh, we need you to drive the big rig," he's like, "Nope, I did my deal. I'm out of here." In that regard, yes, yes, of course. I mean it more so like I don't after his what happened to his wife and kid, and also what yeah. he saw with that woman in the first movie. I don't think he's just right. sitting there like, "Ah, well." You know, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this happens in the desert. Oh, well. Like, oh, no, yeah. he's like, no. oh, fuck. Well, that's what I'm Yeah, that's what wondering. I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I, like, I think I'm he kind cares. of still wondering just, about him. Whether it's, I feel like it's, it's just, he's, again, that, like, that more kind of an thing can push you. Right. Because that kind of thing can push you in one of two directions. It's either 
you rail against it even harder, and wherever you see it, you go and murder the bastards, or you get apathetic and say, well, I'm never going to be able to save everyone, so why try? I think it's both. I think if if he wants to save, like, one person, he's like, I'm going to try and do that. But when it comes to, like, right. all of these people... Saving a group. And, he's sitting, yeah. and, he, and by the way, it's not like he wouldn't run with them, I guess, but it's just kind of like, look, again, my deal was let me help you in this way. And if I could have killed right. them all in that one deal, I totally would have. But... Yeah. I didn't, so right. what's, what are we doing here? And I mean, shit, Which, we're still going on that path of Max cannot have a connection with anybody without them dying. Except for the pilot, yeah, no. the pilot came back. I don't know how the hell he survived that crash. Because yeah. when they were dying left and right off the rig, I was actually sad because I'm like, oh, I I thought they might actually make it out of this until I realized... Well, you know, until you see the sand coming out of the tanker, and it's like, right, that makes sense, because of course they're all going to attack the tanker. You're the diversion. Yeah. I, the way I want to look at it, it, like... I I guess makes it more right for you, because saying, because Max coming back and saying, if it's all the same to you, I'd like to still be the one to drive the tanker. So he is actually biting the bullet for them big time. Because yeah, I, I mean he was kind of brought back. Like I said it but before, still, I I did not know if he was gonna make it out of that one. Yeah, I mean that I'll give you that. Really I mean nice I. See at the end. <laughs> no, I I understand. I mean I always came into it thinking, nah, he'll be fine. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that everyone else is fair game, which is kind of sad because yeah. I really do. I think the one, I think the only issue with this movie that I have is that. And again, I think it's just, you know, us, I don't know about you personally, but like me just being accustomed to watching television and seeing characters grow and then feeling that sadness when they die. Um, I I clearly cared when the characters died, but I wanted, I wish that, you know, some of them would have, would have went on uh, to do better things where, you know, you kind of have the, the, the captain where I don't, I don't know, maybe maybe he grew on some people, but it just felt like, oh, Mm -hmm. sadly, he's going to die soon. And then he just kept on trucking and you're like right. really now okay and then that woman who he was interested in who you were just like i don't know about you but, but I, I say you as the general you i was like oh yeah he's clearly oddly into her and that's odd let's never focus on that again and then they're both driving away at the end and she's just like oh i mean it's the apocalypse he has a penis and i'm like all right if that's if that's how you feel uh because like they were, the way he was driving off with her, it felt as if like there were there would be a thing. I'm just like, all right. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of funny. What what do you prefer? Do you prefer that train of thought? Well, it's the apocalypse, genitals, or do you prefer it's the apocalypse? I love you. And it's just like you two just met, but the oracle says I was going to meet a man who I love. <laughs> <laughs> God damn Which it. one do you prefer? Which one do you prefer? Oh. I think I might prefer the first, but I just don't know what she saw in him personally, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, the idea that he kind of turns around. Because, I mean, when we first meet him, he's setting a trap with it with snakes. It's like, True. okay. In, you know... <sighs> Smart trap. You're right, but you kind of an no. Ass. You're right, but I no, get no, no. it. You're like, no, no, <laughs> you, dude, you're 100 percent right. Actually, he yeah, he did he, ha- he did kind of turn around turn by around. the end. Yeah, and like yeah. you know what? Let me stay because I mean it's kind of the idea of safety in numbers. I mean yes, it's a lot more to feed and take care of, obviously, but you know when you're stuck up against these biker gangs that appear out of nowhere and have monster rigs with them. It's like, yeah, let's uh, let's band together because I think we might have a little bit better of a chance than if we're splintered and yeah. they pick us off one by one, which is what they yeah. delight in doing, dear God. Yeah, again, like the reason why I say I think it's a ratings board thing is because, like, yes, I mean, I'm not, I don't know if they're worse than like the U.S. ratings board and stuff like that, you know, like ratings boards for the U.S. stuff like that, but like, I just feel as if maybe talking about cannibalism might have might be where they're just like, all right, this is 
adults only. And they'd be like, shit. Yeah. Right? Now, but like, that's the interesting, interesting part. I don't what? actually remember anyone cursing. Do you? That's... No, Um, the captain said shit when he was going to crash. Okay. He right. was like, oh, it was a quick right. shit. Okay, it was like, fair. shit. It was like, fair. shit. Okay. Um, no, because I was just funny. I'm like, so we're okay with the, you know, the pillaging and other things, but we're not cursing. And you're right. There, there is a few snuck in there here and there. I feel like the Australianisms, in terms like verbally, they, a lot of them mm. were dropped for a more universal just type of like, uh, like not so much like, oh, we're speaking Merkin, but because again, everyone still had their accents and everything. Yeah. Um, minus. Yeah, minus you're right. The, the gargantu, not what was his name again? Uh, the the um, large humongous? biker. Yeah. Humongous, thank you. In my head it was gargantuan. Yeah. It's like, nope, that was gargantuous. That was another Friday Night movie. Uh, but no, the you know, <laughs> the humongoid, the humongous. Oh god. He he tried to hide his accent very well, but it was so funny right. when it bled out. <laughs> well, no, because he was trying to hide it. He was just yeah. like, he was like, I will right. destroy all of you. But right. then, like, he was, I think it's when he was choking out the other guy because he was trying to explain to him, like, right. look, we know that, I know that you've lost people. He said, do it we, my you know, way. we have, yeah. no, but he was, but he was saying, we have all lost, we have, you know, it's like, we have all lost allies. And I'm just like, really? Like, it's kind of funny. Like, right. certain w- words slip through, but they slip through so hard that it just goes from, like, how are you? My name is. Right. Like, it's just like, wait a minute. Hold on. What was that Actually, one funny. line there? Kind of missed the mannerisms, even though in the first one, some of the some of the mannerisms went over my head. Like, oh, okay, not you're you're, you're referring to verbal enough stuff. to get those. Just... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough to get that out of con, con, context clues, so that one went over my head. But it was I don't know. It was kind of charming in a way. Well, I think what happened with this one is is that even though I do feel like in some ways the first movie just kind of out of nowhere stopped dialogue in any way like it just, yeah. just like out of nowhere it was just like we're not speaking anymore and i was like really now uh this one definitely did that a lot more where i feel like when they did speak it was you know i was the obvious thing you needed to get the plot moving but other than that it felt like there were just large portions of the movie with just no dialogue whatsoever which obviously right. it's still you still you know it takes a lot of time to write because you have to write you know each scene i'm sure they had a story oh, yeah. for it and stuff like that but still, I mean, it was very interesting. It even yeah. makes sense for, especially for Max too. It makes sense because he's usually alone. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, he'll, I mean, say a command or so to the dog, but not really a big speaker. And yeah. after all that's happened to him, maybe he doesn't want to. <laughs> but like when you meet the people at the rig, it's like, yeah, they're all speaking because they live in a small community. So of course they do. But Max in being the third completely movie. alone. In the third yeah. movie, he's just going to be carrying corpses. Like, this is my friend Jim. Oh, God. Jesus, man. Oh, mm. what? Is something wrong with Jim? What? Are you, you going to try to kill him? Because you can't. He's already dead. Oh, <laughs> you can't take any more from me. They're already dead. Oh, no. Isn't that, oh. isn't that right, Jim? Yeah, that's right. My name is Jim. Ha <laughs> ha. Just like, Jesus, man, put that down. You made my best friend Jim? I would never put down Jim. I feel like at that point they'd just... I feel like if he, if he introduced Jim by talking and moving the jaw of the corpse, I think the people would just back away slowly at that point. Be like, I don't want any trouble, man. Please, like, just take the gas. Just take it. We don't want to die. The <laughs> no, next no, 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 no. Mad Max installment. Like it's like, I found him like I, this. That doesn't make it better. The next installment in the Mad Max franchise. Mad Max. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus fucking Christ, Max. Put that thing down. <laughs> it's, just all, it's just in the title. <laughs> it's on the poster. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, my God. But, um... 
I would like to say, though, I think the only – there's only, like, two parts of the movie that I was like, okay, this is a bit much, even for everything that I enjoy and everything that I can deal with. It was just two things that were too much. One was when uh, the Mohawked fellow – I'm going to have to look up his name because I keep on forgetting his name. When he popped yeah. – when we thought he was killed by getting hit by the car, but then when the little kid was trying to get the bullet casing, he appeared. Right. Even for me, he I was like – even for me, I was like, I think this was meant to be suspenseful, but I died laughing. Because it's him being like, Whoa! and the kid being like, ah! and Max being like, I'm fucking dying here, kid. Right. I know you don't fucking speak English. You want me to write? You want me to draw how it fucking looks? Because he can't see what the fuck's going on up there. Yeah. See, he, and that's also the funny part for me. He felt more like the main villain than the actual main villain. Because the leader yeah. actually didn't do that much, and then he just played chicken with Max at the end with a Big Mac truck. I don't yes. know what he thought he was going to accomplish with that. I'm glad the you know Mohawk dude got splattered in between that, because fuck that guy. Yes. No, but dude, 100%. But not really 100%. sure what his boss was thinking. Really no, sure. it really... I think they wanted to flip the dynamics and make a guy like Toe Cutter be the second in command this time. Right. Which which was good and it but it's strange because I think I think it was uh the creator uh, Miller where he said that uh the main guy, you know, the humongous, he used to be a military general perhaps huh. and he got severe burns, that's why he never took off the mask, which right, is fine. The mask, yeah. But it's just so strange because he was supposed to be the main villain and be the one saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. But we didn't really see again. We didn't see a lot from him. And another thing, too, and this isn't my second thing that I found uh, funny slash problematic. I'll get to that a little bit later. But talking about the whole, um, you know, like, oh, military operation gone wrong. It was so funny how they had Max in the, like, kind of like in that, it was a tent, but it looked like it was like a bunk, military bunker with them. Like, all right, here's my deal. You do this with me, and uh, I'll do the thing that I'm planning. It's a really good plan, swear to God, right? What's the plan? We're going to drive. Any one of them right. could have thought of that plan, Max. <laughs> no, yeah, but, but you have to understand, we're, but we're driving <laughs> towards them. Max, anyone could have thought of that? <laughs> Why is yours so special? Because I'm going to get oil out of it. Okay. I don't know. It's just so odd. Like a bunch of the other. Like, what's the plan? Drive towards the enemy. I mean. I mean, again, I guess it was the idea. What can you do? Max is the only one with the with the either guts or insanity to just plow through them with the truck. Very true. I don't know. If Very I'm, true. I, like I, I'd say the captain probably would have had the you know the guts to do it because he was volunteering to do it. But I feel like anyone else would have flinched, and it's like no. You have the bigger vehicle. You will go through them. Trust me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll give you that. Oh, by the way, Wes. 42. There we go. That might be a Wes was the too. mohawked, leather-clad biker. Wes. Oh, man. I like that name. I, I was hoping that wouldn't be the asshole. <laughs> I don't know if you're... In my head, I'm like, is he serious? Because he said some things in the past that it sounds like Wes would be a good... What's strange is I don't think they said his name out loud. No, I don't think maybe they did once or twice and they didn't catch it, but Yeah. Um but uh but yeah, so Lord Humongous was his name. Yeah. Um so again, so interesting because again he didn't really he because it's just so strange because like you look on Wikipedia, it's like the violent yet charismatic and articulate leader and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know about all that. I mean yeah, he f I mean I don't know. He talked I mean, a lot, sure. I don't know if charisma. But, I guess. I guess being able to speak in full sentences and not just grunting and yelling, or a combination about of both, like murder. Yeah. Yeah. Is is as far as, like is you know the bar for charisma in this universe? Which oddly enough, you know what? I, we're not oddly at all. Kind of makes sense, I guess, if you think about it. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I just, it was just so strange because he's, again, and I, maybe we're just, 
we're being dicks here because we're just looking at his muscles and we're just like, oh, because well, it's not like he can't be charismatic and have the muscles. It's just like, for some, yeah, no, I don't know, I mean, he seemed like, he just seemed like they like... played it up it's him so much as like a brute that I didn't really see yeah. him as, also he said similar things over and over. So it's not like he was like coming up with like brand new ideas right. of just like, right. yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> I, um, mean, one, one I feel thing, like he but, has, the position, like, he has the mindset of how to organize them to make them an effective mm. rating group. Um, but, like, as far as charisma, I feel like, you know, because he even says, like, you know, oh, fear is our ally. It's like, yeah, he rules through fear, not through, <laughs> not, not really through charisma, not, not what I would necessarily call a charismatic leader. It's just, no, I will snap your neck if you do not follow me. Okay, boss, you got it. You know? Yeah, right. Which I mean, yeah. Yet, I feel like he. The end, I feel like he, the arrows, arrows would just bounce off his fucking muscles. Oh yeah, right. No, he's <laughs> he's just flexes and the fucking arrowhead. Now we're getting back into the fist of the North Star. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, oh, the, when when um when Max just pulls out dynamite, it's just like I use it's like I use martial arts with dynamite. That's not a real martial arts. Hey, what works, right? Hey, it works. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Um oh, but no, I, I I it was just one of those um uh, speaking of the villains in this film, I feel like the villains in the first one even though in my head they weren't as uh like they could have been built up a bit more. I think in this mm-hmm. one they were definitely like they were not um as as fleshed out as I would have liked. Yeah. And I, I think I mean, the first about a lot one of felt like an actual yeah the first one the first group felt like an actual gang. These guys feel like murder hobos, which is yeah we, that's a D, we joke well, in D about the party turning into murder hobos. <laughs> well, you know oh. I'll say this much right they kind of were in the first one as well. Let's be real. Oh yeah, but right. at oh, least of course. Be, but at least us focusing on them so much in the ways that we did, and then they finally cross paths with, uh, with Max later on, that's kind of like right. we've seen them not grow because they've just been, you know, murderous throughout the film, but we had seen them in other ways beforehand so that we can get accustomed to them. But in this case, they just showed them so early, but not enough to – great, I'm not saying we had to wait like a full 30 minutes until they – you know, or 40 minutes until they cross paths with Max and this, and this yeah. group – but it just feels like no one in this – like, I think that's my only critique is that in the first one, even though in some ways we felt like it was like a big action movie, there were still some, you know, uh, there, there was still some semblance of like, no, we're trying to go for something that, you know, we're building up Max and his family. We're building up this, we're building up this so that we can just kind of tear it all away. In some ways, I thought it right. took too long to tear it all away, but they still built up to that point when they ripped it all yeah. to shreds. Here, right. yes, it's nothing they ripped to shreds with Max, but I feel like they just didn't build up much with the rest of them. Granted, I, mm. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I think maybe I'm just salty about Warrior Woman dying. Maybe it's just me. Yeah. Um, maybe I'm just. I salty mean, I was that, sad that um, the paralyzed what? dude died too, because like his legs start getting lit on fire because he dropped yeah. a Molotov when he got shot. That was sad. And then yeah, he tries I, to pull her back up onto the rig, and then they just get pulled off and run over. Like, I, I'm i not saying I would have wanted him to go out like this, but I thought when he was, like, kind of dumping the... I guess, I don't know if it was oil or gas or what he was... Whether it was... Wa- oh, I guess maybe he was trying to put himself out. I thought he was dousing himself in fuel, and he was just going to, like, jump onto one of the cars that was coming by and, like, try and take them out that way with himself... But that's yeah, what I think like, I would have liked what it if he had gotten the chance to go out in a blaze of glory instead of just being pulled off the rig and then oh bye. Yeah, yeah. You and I have seen too many movies. I know this is a movie, True. but you and I have seen too many movies, so we're expecting a blaze of glory from at least one character, and we get yeah. none. And yeah, that's a bit more realistic in some ways. But at the same yeah. time, when you're getting into fights like this, yeah. you can. 
you can spare me at least a little bit of realism and have someone die in a bit more of a blaze of glory, in a blaze of glory. rather than yeah. just getting shot with an arrow. And it's like, all right, I guess you're done. Right. I mean, she even took out the one guy crawling up on the other side, but then she gets hit with the the car that keeps yeah. shooting the darts. I mean, shit, yeah. they took out... They kept hitting the tires with those. That was the second time, <laughs> too. That's like the fourth time you've shot out the tires on this thing. Where did... I mean, I guess they had more tires at the oh. compound, but it's like, did you have specific big rig tires, or did you just, you know, MacGyver that shit? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I want to say, you know what I noticed that this movie had a l- much larger budget than it did previously? What? When we saw a fucking flying machine. That too. <laughs> the se- I, I got to be honest. I know explosions cost money, and so do the costumes. Everything costs money, even filming in that yeah. desert. I'm sure they had to pay someone to be in that desert. I get it. Everything costs money. But the second they're like, oh, let's see if this is if it's still rigged properly. And I'm like, what? And then he starts, fl- they're flying in the air. And I'm just like, I yeah. I think the budget may have increased. I mean, that really yeah. helped them out, too, to have air support. I mean, shit. And just throwing Molotovs yeah. down at them. That was freaking awesome. By the way, speaking of the budget, uh, I want to mention uh, what the budget was. The first movie, this is in Australian dollars, by the way, 350000 to 400000 and then the box the box office U.S. So I don't know why it's only U.S. and not in Australian dollars. The box office U.S. was 100 million. Mm. I can see why the director slash creator of the film said, "Yeah, there was pressure to make a sequel." Well, you know, no. when 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 350 thousand to 400 thousand was spent, and 100 million dollars was made was made back. I think you, you know, can make a sequel, <laughs> or at least Not gonna lie. you can see you can see why there's pressure. And right. so the second one was made. Duh! Here we are talking about it. And uh, the the budget was 4.5 million in Australian dollars. Wow. So you see how that spiked okay. up? Yes. Yeah. But guess what though? But guess what though? The box office numbers for Australia alone were 10.8 million dollars. Holy shit. I know. Then factoring in the U.S. box office, because, yes, even though Mad Max was stripped from the title of the film, obviously, right. as I mentioned, it still resonated with a fair amount of people. Um, and yeah. I, and as, we can, as we can tell, knowing what we know now, clearly it inspired so much, it, it had to have done well enough to inspire that many people yeah. and that many you know creators and fans and stuff like that that when you look at the box office numbers in the US this is including Canada as well at the time it was 23.7 million damn there's a reason why um I mean, of course, rock and roll, roll was obviously a lot of, you know, very popular before this movie. I mean, uh, duh, right? Uh, rock yeah. and roll didn't appear after 1980. However, no. I, I do feel as if pre-1980, it was a lot of, you know, we're summoning the devil. Mm. And I think, I'm not saying that there weren't, you know, road warriors pre-1980, but I do. I would argue that maybe post nineteen eighty, post a film like this, things became a lot more, you know, re- re- you know, road warriors, post apocalyptic. Sure, there were demons, yeah. of course. People still summoned the devil and everything. But you know, there was rock and roll. Definitely. I mean, just introducing the fucking, you know, Mister Humongous as the Ayatollah of rock and roll. Right, yeah. Which also uh, a professional wrestler, Chris Jericho, introduced himself as when he was pro wrestling uh, in the 90s. He be, and he, By the way, he was, it was really funny. Like, I'll show you some clips of him. He's hilarious. I think I have shown you some clips of, like, more recent Chris Jericho. But still, it's just so funny. He would introduce himself as the Ayatollah of rock and rolla. And now I know that that's from this film. And, of course, I'm sure many other pieces of media as well. It's just kind of funny. I'm like, oh, he got it from this. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but still, though, uh, I mean, again, I'm not trying to just define an entire genre of rock and roll just by one fucking movie. But still, this <laughs> when this movie makes $23.7 million in Canada and the U.S., I think people saw it. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, it's kind of funny, though, because it's called a cult classic, and maybe compared to other you know, grosses at the time, maybe it is a cult classic. But I think just compared right. to how much money was spent on it, I'm kind of like... Yeah. To, I don't know. Maybe that's I just, guess it's to yeah. me. I, I guess it's it's the kind of movie. It's like if you like big action sequences and stuff like that. If you like the poco, post-apocalyptic feel to it, like it's kind of one of those things you you'll really love this or you will have no interest whatsoever. Well, I think because what it is, is 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 I feel like the action sequences they don't uh, they don't take away or anything like that. But like the action sequences, it's just interesting how. Uh, they blend in with the post-apocalyptic stuff because not that you wouldn't have action without that or anything like that. Cause yes, the two usually do come yeah. together, but I feel like some, a, a film franchise and I haven't seen too many of these, but a film franchise like the fast and the furious has like taken like, and not, not a post-apocalyptic, but like the action sequences, just like many other action films that have driving scenes. And they've kind of taken it into like a very, like into such a, in such a way that, I feel like if you're like, oh, I really love, you know, fast-paced action and cars and everything and car chases and all this stuff, but the post-apocalyptic thing doesn't really do it for me. It's like you can get that from, like, Fast and the Furious. It's just so strange right. how, like, you know, the – I don't say how the, how the genre has, has evolved, if you will, because, again, there's, you know, there's, there's always going to be an offset of this and offset of that, and Fast and the Furious, you know, was a video game as well and stuff like that. So it's just – I don't know, it's just funny to think about how it's just like these two blend so well together, yet at the same time, I think due to where post, post-apocalyptic stuff has gone, you kind of sit back and you're like, oh, but these are very action-y sequences, like very high, you know, fast-paced action sequences that I think, I don't know, either you wouldn't expect or if you do expect them, you think of them more like Fury Road, where because yes, most of this was a desert wasteland, but at the end they kind of got back on normal roads again, and it looked like normal everyday Australia, sort of. Right. I don't know if you well, noticed yeah, that, like when that, they're driving the, that whole the idea. tanker and everything. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess they were. Oh, yeah, I guess it's on the tanker. Yeah, well, that's the too, end. You probably don't want to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to be driving that on the off-road too much either no 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 just like just for budgetary concerns i'm sure like just for filming yeah you know or even just um, safety concerns even too <laughs> yeah you're right you're right like you potentially had mel gibson in the car right so it's kind of like yeah oh probably don't want any of that. which um along with losing his dog were you sad when the car blew up because I'm not gonna lie. I was kind of sad he lost his cool car. It was kind of one of I his was? last, you know, things of home. Yeah. No, I'll give you that 100. percent I really when you kind of live out of your car in in that kind of universe, it's kind of sad to see your vehicle go. Yeah. No, 100. percent Actually, I'll give you that because at the end of this movie, you're kind of like, well, what does he what does he have left? And I he do kind of wonder uniform if uniform and his sawed-off shotgun. <laughs> But he, how the fuck do you get around? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, he's completely you know, fucked. <laughs> it's kind of why I, I do uh, think that... So I have a question for you. Do you think that this movie, you know, may have been, at least to the creator of the, the franchise, the end? Like, it was like, okay, I made the second one that you guys kind of wanted me to make. And also, I, I wanted to make it because I thought we could have a bigger budget because that is a quote from him. So it kind of felt like, all right, it's done. He lost the dog that we just gave him. He lost the car. Mm-hmm. And the kid narrated about it as if like, oh, and the big future is coming where, you know, I'm alive and I'm telling my tale of Max. Right. Like, Do you think this was meant to be like the end? You know? Yeah, it might have been the send-off, yeah. Yeah. Um, I only bring it up because, like, again, you lose the car. It, you kind of make him, like, a right. big figure of, like, granted, we don't know what's coming up in three. In four, yeah. he was just, I'm sure, in a in a car. Like, I know he was just in a car. Um, yeah. But um, but still, looking at uh, looking at three, though, I have no idea what's coming up for three. I have no idea what they did there. I just know the name, you know, like I said earlier, Beyond Thunderdome, um, which I can imagine what, you know, what happened there. Um yeah. But uh, I can – well, I mean, yeah, I assume – I'm just assuming last parts of civilization 
of course you're going to well, fucking end up making a shitty ass coliseum putting people to to the death or right. something. I assume something yeah. like that. Um but anyway, just looking at this though, um I I I have to say it was uh it really did feel like kind of a send off where we're just kind of like, yeah, you know, he's – and also it felt like a very interesting take on a Western. And I think that's what's interesting about – you're looking at the Western. People talked about how it was going to die after a while. I remember like Spielberg talked about how uh, comic books are going to go the way of the Western and et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and right. the comic, book, comic book movies. Comic book movies are going to go the way of the Western. And, no. um, and maybe that is – well, I mean, it's funny. He said that like two years ago, but honestly – after something like Infinity War, I know that Marvel oh, has more yeah. plans for post-Infinity War, but yeah. will people – I mean, that's the thing. Like, will people – some people feel like they've been like, oh, I've been satisfied. I saw two Infinity War movies, and now we're not going to have any more Captain America, Iron Man, Thor. You know, they're all going to go away. Right. It's like, is – you know what I'm saying? Like – or maybe people will feel like, oh, I'm good, and then they'll end. Yeah. But my whole point is this, though. The, the quote-unquote Western went away, but then you ended up seeing it uh, become transformed and changed over time, like with right. a movie like this. You know, where it, this movie has a very Western feel to it, especially the end of the film. Right. But... But it clearly is not a western, and you're like I feel like if you show this to your grandpa, who used to watch the old westerns on TV. He might be like, "Is that a boy on the back of that bike?" Yes, grandpa, that's a boy in in leather. <laughs> it's okay, grip. It's okay, grandpa. He's gonna die if that makes you feel any better. Oh, oh no. Oh jeez. Oh, oh Jesus, oh, God. grandpa. <laughs> oh God. I like the main character. He seems the most masculine. Still in leather, Grandpa. Just putting that out there. Oh God. But um, but yeah, I, I just I I. But not even the so putting aside the fact that it's a send off. As we're kind of wrapping this podcast up, um, what do you? What was your? What do you think was your favorite part of the film? Favorite part and also or favorite scene and also least favorite scene. I'm curious. Well, I think you already know my least favorite scene. <laughs> Dog dying, I, I assume. The what? If, it's, if it's the car over the dog, then how fucking dare you? Oh my god. Oh well. No, okay. I mean... Well, I assumed that was the obvious one. I didn't think that would be the. Yeah. I didn't think that scene with the woman was gonna was gonna like. I don't think you have to mention it. Like I think it's a fucking obvious one. But all right. I mean, okay, other than that fair. one. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Yeah, lose, losing his dog and losing the car, and then everybody dying off the big rig. Um, one scene, Tristan. I know, I know. But you named one on third the of the film. Probably, I know, I know. Um, I mean, yeah, the fight on the rig was probably my favorite bit. Oh, okay, that, that was your favorite. I don't know, in my, and your yeah, yeah. In my head, okay. like whenever I hear Mad Max, it's shit like that that I think of. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, again, somewhat same here, um, or at least even before, even if not that, I at least thought of this, you know, this huge giant wasteland and and all, you know, this just orange as far as the eye can see. Um, yeah. One thing I think I'm I'm trying to think of my favorite scene. I think my favorite scene might have been hmm. Because that was a nice scene, but I th- I do think that sometimes my brain kind of gets lost in wanton destruction. So I think my favorite mm-hmm. scene might just be, um, I'm thinking maybe hmm. I I like the opening scene a lot, but I I do think showing, huh. It's odd. I'm trying to think of like a favorite scene that really like, stuck out to me. Um, oh, I think them. Kind of intro- I think the bad guys introducing themselves to everyone. Actually, no, even just no, just Max meeting a community. Sure, they felt mm. they were odd, you know, with him. They were kind of just like, oh well, whatever deal you made, died with him. Anyway, see ya. Yeah. I was like, holy shit. I know it's pop- like I, I get mean, it, but holy shit. I at get that it. point, they can't. They don't even just dis- yeah. like what's to distinguish him from just another bandit. They don't even know if he was I the know. one who killed him. To be fair, I know. Yeah. 
what I felt odd with that scene, was it just me or because they used the real guy, they didn't like make a model or anything, I never thought he was actually dead until they said it out loud. I thought he was just yeah. severely wounded. Yeah, me too. Kind of All right, so it's not just me. It. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. Good, it's not just me. Because it looked like he was just severely wounded until like they were just like, look, whatever deal you had died with him. And I was like, oh, wait, dead? Uh, I know he was dead. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, my first reaction yeah. was like looking back at Max. I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, I think. Put him I in the bag and take his car. Damn it. Yeah. I think my least favorite scene, because I, I don't want to pick the same one as you with the dog, because that one's yeah. obvious. Just like the other scene that, you know, you you and I both think is obvious. Um, I want to say, and this was the second scene that I mentioned, because like, earlier on, this is tying everything together. Early on when I was like, oh, there's two scenes that kind of made me like, I don't know if it made me like, it took me out of the film exactly, but because you know the first one I told you was, you know, when you, when you have um, Wes just fucking grab the bullet shell with the kid, right? That was the first one that I was like, I think I'm not supposed to be laughing. And the next one was when we had Humongous just kind of posing on the fucking hill while they're showing a montage of other things, and they're just having him just talk oh. about, you know, what he's yeah, going to do to people them. People being tortured and lit on fire yeah, the tortured, and God knows what else. The torch. Yeah, the torture stuff was bad. It didn't make me laugh necessarily. It's just like it took me out of the film because not only was the shot different, and maybe it's just the way the Blu-ray transfer looked, but not only did the shot look different, like the colors looked different, the lighting looked different, it was from a tilt. Right. It just it just yeah. looked like he was – like I know, I know I brought up wrestling earlier, but like let's just be real here, Tristan. It, out of context, doesn't it look like Cage from like fucking uh, Lucha Underground just cutting oh. a promo? Oh. Doesn't it? Oh God! But no, but doesn't it look like a pro wrestler cut it, cutting a promo? Like I'm gonna take you, and then I'm gonna crush you, just like I crushed your oh friends. Yeah. That's kind of why it, it took me out of it a little bit, I guess. Not just the pro wrestling, gotcha. thing, but it took me out of it because it just it, it was just shot so differently, and it changed so di- yeah. like compared to the rest of the film, the way it was shot and everything. Yeah. So it just kind of felt like You're it was right. weird. Yeah, and maybe it looked for... that way because what? I tried to think of it as he was. Like, I mean, psychologically attacking the community in a way. It's like, this is what I'm going yeah. to do to you after, you know, after the sun rises and that kind of thing. But, yeah, it yeah. was, it was already, an interesting yeah. way to shoot it. Because <laughs> they already told, you already mentioned, like, I feel like the community is just like, wait, he's going to do that to us? I thought he was going to give us cookies. I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. Before, he said he was going to murder us. I saw him murdering us. Now he's right. saying... He's going to murder us. Which one is but it now? Now he's going to do it. <laughs> now he's going to do it even harder. <laughs> I'm so it's confused. Like, at first I was just going to murder you. Now I'm going to fucking murder you. Uh, oh, wait, what's the difference? You don't want to know. Oh. oh well, no. well, I think, it's like, I think we're going to leave. <laughs> right, like, we might leave, uh, but um, but yeah. So you know, I think that uh, it wasn't. A, it definitely wasn't a bad movie, though. Overall, I think that you know, it might, just by I don't want to end it on this to be like, oh, ha, ha. no, this was actually an amazing movie. I think that people oh, were really? talking about both at the time and I think over time, people have talked about this being the best sequel to a movie ever. I might huh. have to agree. Hear me out, Tristan. Yeah. Usually sequels no, 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 to I, films are really bad. Oh, yeah, you, okay, yeah. good. I don't have to convince I, you. I would yeah. agree, too, because I really enjoyed this one, too. Yeah, no, it's really hard to make a movie. Now, I don't know, I don't want to say it's better than the first one, but it definitely is really hard to make a movie that is as good as, uh, or right. better in different ways, at the very least. Better in certain yeah. ways, not every way, than the first film, you know? Right. And also, it's a bit, another thing, too, I want to mention, too, is that, like, this isn't like a Star Wars situation where, you know, we have like, or even a Star Trek where we have like, this was never really, in my opinion, meant to be a multimedia franchise. franchise like Star yeah. Wars was made, the first one was made to at least, well, at least in Lucas's mind to be like, maybe another, maybe another two, maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure he was always going to make it a trilogy. 
Well, I mean, and, if it you know, failed, the first three then, were always going to be a thing. I mean, if it failed, then no. I mean, remember when it first was in theaters, it didn't have a New Hope on it, or it didn't have Episode Four on it. All right, yeah, that's fair. Right, it was the first yeah. one. Well, all right, yeah. I no, mean, the first I, one was just Star Wars: A New Hope, and then once it right. did well in theaters, like a few months later, I think, or within the same year, then in theaters when they were re-airing it or re-airing, but like you know, putting it out there, they put the title card in there. Episode oh, four, yeah, people right. are like, "What? Right. What's going yeah. on? What? Hmm? Yeah." But and with Mad it Max, it's just like, hope, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. But with Mad Max, right. it's just like, here's Mad Max. Then apparently it right. overperforms so well. It's just like two years – within two years, it's like, here's Mad Max number two. And then that fucking performs like, all right, so all well. Right, I'll like, give you another one. <laughs> I'll give you a third one. Jesus, shit. You know? But um, yeah. but yeah, and so – and we'll t- be talking about that one God knows when. I love how we jump towards the Matrix. Where it's like, we're both – we're going to the future. We're going into an apocalypse, but very different uh, – very different types. Yeah. Very different stuff there. But um, but anyway, so <laughs> as one, we're wrapping this up, anything else? In one, the machines else? keep going. In the other one, yeah. the machines completely stop. <laughs> I feel like both people in both universes would trade. Oh god! <laughs> I think I think they would. Oh. I feel like I feel like Max would be like, "Wait, I get to see my wife and kids again. Plug me in. Just oh. fucking put it into my goddamn brainstem." Oh yeah. Oof. And then Neo would be like, "Wait, I don't have to control anything. Nothing's controlling me." Yeah, but you might right. get murdered by real people. Awesome. <laughs> No, 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 Neo, no. Neo, no. Neo, please right. stop. You don't know Kung Fu in this people? universe, Neo. Neo, you don't know Kung oh, Fu. Oh, oh God. God, they just hit him with a dart in the eye. All right, he's dead. Oh. The chosen one's dead. Well. Shit. Well. Yeah, right. Mad Max well, just having fun like, with his family. Up, <laughs> Mad Max having fun with his family in the other world, just jumping around, having fun. Oh, God. They're like, Max, oh, you are the chosen one. Nope. No, I'm not. Fuck you. No, I'm not. Okay. Nope. Nope. Not. Nope. 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 This is my family. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, there was but, one last thing I wanted to mention because I forgot to mention it earlier with the opening please. sequence. It was nice that they threw in a little bit more detail with, um, you know, how the apocalypse the, came to be. Apparently, it was right. just us causing war. Go figure. Well, war because of the oil situation. Oh well, yeah. Something right. that. Wasn't no because the thing is, I I don't believe in the first one. Like I think either they discussed it via trailers or be, due to the second one, it kind of retro like it retconned it in our heads. But in the first one, it just felt like I I know they mentioned it in the film in some way or another, but it wasn't as heavily pushed. Like things are getting real right. bad, guys. Yeah. But in this one, obviously, yes, due to the opening narration, not the kid, but just in general. Uh, actually, yeah. no, it was the kid, technically, actually. Yeah. He was the narrator. Even because in the, in the, they no, talk about it. Yeah, yeah people mm-hmm. went to war over the oil, and it was, you know, long for... Or, I don't... You know, even long forgotten why they went to war and did the things that they did, but they kind of ruined the planet for the rest of us. And then the leaders tried to well, fix yeah. it by talking and talking, and everything just went to shit all around them while they were talking. <laughs> no, no, but it's it's good because it... It takes my joke about, you know, the whole BDSM gear thing. And even though I still think that it's a bit much, you know, like nukes don't equal, like there's like a, 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 a something crossing. Like nukes do not equal BDSM gear. But, <laughs> yes, there's, it, there, is, there is a cross through that equal sign. But, oh, my maybe point there's lead in their BDSM gear. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, but, no. um, I mean, yeah. I, I'm, all I'm it shielded here, them from Chris, the radiation, Max. <laughs> Well, not all of them, because they because they don't wear it all fair. over their entire body. That is fair. But I love it. Just sure, my groin hasn't been irradiated, but my pecs are fucking <laughs> nuclear. <laughs> That's how they get so ripped. Oh my yeah. god! Just, I love it. Just don't touch don't, don't touch the car. It's booby trapped. Don't touch my pecs. They'll explode. Oh my god. Don't touch my pecs. What? They're booby trapped. Wait. <laughs> just flexes. I'm done. It's like, 
Uh. I'm done. I'm done. Um. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not what I'm sure trying what to... that's supposed to mean. <laughs> we're cu- we're cutting. No, no, we're cutting this off now. No. Um. What I'm trying to say though. Tristan, all jokes aside, is that um, while I don't see that connection one-to-one, yes, it does show that there's a reason why they didn't just film in an Australian desert. It's a desert because things went exploded versus in the first like, – because, again, if – yes, bad things would happen – if there was a very, you know, lack of oil, no more oil, we couldn't supply any of our major cities with oil. That would be a huge deal. But at the same time, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be bombing the, you know, we wouldn't be bombing ourselves, right? Like, right. you know what I'm saying, Tristan? Like, we don't own bombs. Government, though, goes to war. That's a bit different. Right. Yeah. That's where things start to change. Government's going to war, bombing each other over these resources, spending more resources and going to war. Right. Boom. Like, that is where we end up having problems, and that kind of explains why there weren't any cops in this movie. Right. Because, I mean, there were cop cars that were clearly stolen, but it didn't seem like there were any cops, because I was wondering, like, after the first one, it's like, not every cop was like, fuck it. There has to be some that were like, well, let's, let's try to keep some kind of order in some regard. Yeah, I mean, it felt like, well, if the masses rebel hard enough, there, there just isn't enough to keep the peace. Yeah. I but, mean, um, it does kind of reflect the oil crises that we had, you know, in the 80s, too. I mean, granted, well, I'm not point. sure if Australia had the same effect that the no, U.S. Remember, did, but... we, no, remember, we talked about this. It was in the 70s when the creator yeah. of this film, uh, the creators, saw that when people were waiting on long lines in cars for, right, for oil. Right, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was telling you this in the first one. When they saw this happen... Right. They actually saw, like, let's say someone cuts in line, right? So I guess people are, like, I don't know if they were personally in line, like, as a person or as a car. But either way, if they're trying to cut, they would be viciously beaten by mobs. Right. And that inspired them to think, like, wow, imagine if, right, what if. And then that turned into the first film or parts of the first film. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But uh, but anyway, so we're going to wrap this up. I want to thank you all. Is there anything else you want to say, Tristan, before we finish up? No, we got, we got it, yeah. All right, so I want to say, I love it. We got the take. We're good. Thank you, Tristan. Um, that's a wrap. Close up shop. No, but uh, thank you all so much for listening in. As always, if you're watching this to our YouTube channel, Those Guys on the Radio, then please remember to like and subscribe if you liked the video. And if you didn't like the video, you can still like and subscribe either way. Now, you could actually be listening to this through our Blog Talk Radio account, which is blogtalkradio.com slash Those Guys on the Radio, or maybe you searched up Those Guys on iTunes, and you can find all of our different podcasts on there as well, not just our Friday Night Movies podcasts. We also have Star Wars Wednesdays, which, by the way, I want to mention, we could have done something Star Wars related on May 4th. However, I would like to mention that we're not organized. Also, we've done every single Star Wars movie. So that's another thing, too. So, I'll admit. But we're also not organized. Anyway, so you can find our Anna Saturday stuff as well. You can find our Star Trek Thursday stuff, TV Tuesdays, Monday Night Movies. We have a bunch of different reviews that we've done. Even Keikaku Corner, which you can find as well, that we're starting up again sooner rather than later, within the next month or so. We're actually starting up Keikaku Corner, which is where Tris and I talk about weekly uh, anime news or anime, manga, tokusatsu, different kind of geek news over on our YouTube channel, Those Guys on the Radio. Also, you can check out our Let's Plays and other gaming-related content content on our YouTube channel, Those Guys Play, where Tristan and I have actually played, just this season alone, we played Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. We also played uh, Dragon Ball Z Budokai for the GameCube on something called Super Sleepover, where you and I went head-to-head, one-on-one, just like we did with the Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Melee, but in this case, to see who is the best Dragon Ball Z Budokai player. And you guys should check out who won that over on our YouTube channel in Super Sleepover. Uh, also, we're still doing Those Guys Play seasons. Just recently like I mentioned with you, uh, with Tristan, we did it was an episode of Those Guys Play season four, and we have some more coming up. We even have a Cinco de Mayo special coming up tomorrow. Not with Tristan, sadly, but it's a very interesting Cinco de Mayo special that we have. Uh, it's very fun. 
and uh, you'll see you'll see what happens uh, when it comes out. But uh, we also have other gaming content as well on the channel. Like I have Mappy's Games for Childhood, where I play games that I played when I was a kid. Also, TG tutorials where I teach you how to do like different D- DIY, do-it-yourself kind of stuff. Uh, also, I have Matt rants where I rant about different uh, new topics and stuff like that. Um, either new topics or different questions. Some of you guys might ask me either by emailing us at those guys on the radio at gmail.com or by commenting in the comment section below and stuff like that. So uh, also, by the way, you can go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Productions, to actually, depending on what tier you give to, you can suggest different podcasts to us, either reviews, top fives, top tens, stuff like that. Uh, it could be like a top five Star Wars movies or something like that. Also, you can even go, you know, go to our uh, Let's Play channel with our Teacher Productions Patreon and actually say, hey, I would like you guys to, do, to play this game or talk about this game or review this game because I also have game reviews that are coming out as well on Those Guys Play. First one I did just last week was Mega Man X for the Super Nintendo. And also, I would like to mention that we have merchandise as well over at our main website, which is tgproduction.net slash merchandise, or over at our eBay, which is ebay.com slash USR slash those guys radio. Very interesting, fun shirts and you know video games that we've uh, that I have in my collection, wrestling merch and stuff like that you can get over at our eBay as well. Okay, I think we're done. Tristan, are you still are you still with us? Has the apocalypse yeah, taken I got you? You've you've stalled long enough. I've gotten the gas. Let's get out of here. All right. We're going to get the fuck out of here. Thank you all for listening in. All right. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. We're getting the fuck out of Dodge, and so should you.